Hey, Good Smackers, and welcome back to the Good Smack Podcast brought to you by Hey Social Good. I'm your host, Cindy J. And I'm Kate Hauser, and we're here to talk some smack. Good smack, of course. Each episode, we interview leaders, business owners, and thought provokers in the world of sustainability and social good in hopes of inspiring you to do some good through more mindful, conscious habits. Sometimes all we really need is a good smack to wake us up to the issues facing our world and small steps that we can take to help give back. So Cindy J, are you ready to talk some smack? Yes, I am. Let's do it. Hey there, welcome to the Good Smack for the Planet podcast. Can you imagine a world where every front or backyard and some balconies produce food? Well, if you haven't yet, listen to part one of Mia Vaughn of Good Neighbor Garden San Diego, and you'll be able to hear how this can be accomplished. This is part two of our chat with Mia. I couldn't bring myself to edit out Mia's amazing take on gardening and learning to be a good human being. What she shares in the next part nearly made me jump out of my chair. So I'm glad you're continuing to hear Mia's take on being an African-American social impact woman entrepreneur and modern farmer. I think you're going to thank me for this masterclass like part two, and I won't be surprised if you'll be starting your gardening this weekend. And don't fret if you live in an apartment building. You can be like Mia, who gardens productively from her pots. Yeah, you could be the you could be the garlic garden. Like you literally just stick the thing in the ground and walk away, but you could be the garlic garden. Like we could get today we're gonna harvest Cindy's garden because she's got the garlic. And then everybody's gonna get <laughs> right. garlic, right? Like the idea of sharing is sort of a even though it's elementary, it's the first thing we learn in school, we have gotten so far away from it, we don't even we're so disoriented, right? So the whole concept of I have abundance and I actually have more than I need and more than I can even eat. And rather than have that go to waste, I am gonna choose to share that like that whole thing right there that takes a long time in some cases because people feel entitled because there's this concept of ownership right when the land doesn't speak this language of ownership but for people we have this concept of I bought this land it is mine everything on it is mine everything that grows on it is mine 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 all mine (laughs) (laughs) right so, but you know what, God, you've got like 300 avocados on this tree, you know, would you like to maybe consider sharing, would you, would you be willing to share? And you know, this whole, the thing that kind of guides me every day is Mia, you do not have because you do not ask. So I have to ask people every day. That's my job. My job and one of my eldest um, cousins told me, you know, you, I'm going to give you this thousand dollars when I first start. I'm going to give you this thousand dollars because I think what you're doing is important. But you're, you have to take this thousand dollars and realize that you're going to need more all the time. And you have to be willing to ask, not just for money, but for everything. That's going to be your job going forward. So you should know that. And in my everyday practice, I have to ask, would you be willing to share your avocados? Oh my gosh. Would you, would you care to share your apples? Would you care to share your grapes? Like I have to be willing to, ask. if I don't ask that, so many people do not have. So many people will not have. And we are collaborating with, you know, the Jewish family services where, who serve, you know, people who are, um, you know, without shelter and so many wonderful programs where they feed people. We're, we're also collaborating with the voices of our city choir, who the homeless, the choir for the um, people without homes and also people who are um, fragile to not have homes. So there's all of these demographics of folks that we can reach because we're willing to ask. And so my farmhands have to do the same. They have to ask, you know, would you be willing to share? You've got four cucumbers and they're getting really big. Would you be willing to share? And that's how we get our food. That's how we do food. Yeah. So it's difficult and it requires humility and it requires, you know, the willingness to be rejected or for someone to say, no, I I don't want to share the divine, you know, and we just have to be like, okay, well, we'll ask you again later, you know, and it's hard. Right. Yeah. Like how much guacamole are you actually going to make with those avocados? <laughs> like just let us have them. <laughs> I mean, I know it's, it, it sounds silly, but you know, we all kind of were raised to think that if we have everything, you know, if we have surplus, then we're even better off. But when in fact, you know, if we have surplus, sometimes we're, we have a deficit of goodwill, which is really important for, you know, it, it builds our character. You know, you watch your actions because they become, or watch your thoughts because they become your actions. Watch your actions because they become your habits. Your habits become your character. Yes. So if you practice the habit of giving, it becomes your character. And all of a sudden we've created a, an individual or you've cultivated in yourself an individual who's more woke, who's more, will, you know, resonant. 
and inf can be influential in a good way. And that's kind of the world we want to live in. And so we're really trying to cultivate it one yard at a time, one vegetable at a time, one ask at a time, one neighbor at a time. That's our, that's really what Good Neighbor Gardens is about. We just use food, which is our highest yeah. common denominator to get to the same goal that maybe somebody else uses, right? Yeah. And everybody understands food, right? I mean, everybody needs it. Everybody understands it. And I it. love your ask because in some ways you're asking for those who can't for whatever reason, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're asking all the time for many of the people who either need it or want it, but doesn't know how to ask. And I think I would imagine that people who are being asked because you said, you know, you're saying people don't think about it that way. You know, it gives them an opportunity to give, which the whole purpose of giving you know that's something also for us at you know hey so sugar we really care about is how do you give in the ways that people feel they can or how do you open yourself up to giving and i love 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 the idea of gardening and giving which is true like it started from a love story of giving and now you're trying to slowly do it one by one with yeah. action in person yeah, and if you ask Walt, my partner, you know, you know, you know, how did you grow this wonderful cucumber? I mean, it's just perfectly shaped and formed. He's like, well, you know, I didn't grow that. I just put my hand to it. You know, God did that. God did that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like give credit where credit's due. And so, really, what for us, it's a spiritual practice. It's like when we do this, when we sacrifice our time, we go out there, we sweat, we we get dirty, we dig in the dirt. You know, it's like it's not glorious, it's not glamorous. I mean, he was, you know he was the head of nonprofits before this and he went to medical school. And so we both kind of had this like, you know, other life. And now we're like on the ground on our hands and knees, you know, sometimes we even get criticized. Some of our friends say, you know, why are you out there working like a slave? Oh, you know? And so people don't understand. And like we are, our, our, our title of our business is good neighbor gardens, San Diego urban share crop. And people oh. say, why do you, why do you insist on using that term? I mean, even the Redskins change their name now. Right. You know, why do you insist on staying with that term? And it's like, because if you erase history, you won't be able to really understand the context of where we are now. So I will not, I will use that word and I will hopefully create a new paradigm with it. That's 180 degrees opposed from where it was before. This share crop is about giving from abundance. This share crop is not about subject subjugation or peonage. This is different, but I'm going to stay with that so that I can actually teach the lessons of my ancestors and I can, we're standing on their shoulders and I'm not going to disrespect them by changing the name. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I mean, I'm do it. It's, it's appreciation. Yeah. yeah. It's appreciation for such a beautiful art that is now something that is going to be helping so many people. I mean, I want you guys to consider one thing and I'm putting it in my insert this week, but you know, when the Africans were being forcibly taken in the slave trade, they braided seeds in their hair. Wow. Carry with them. And they did that because that was their wealth. They knew that if they had seeds, they could make it on the other side. They could yeah. eat, they could provide for themselves. They could make a way. Like, you know, I am, I, I need to teach those things, yeah. you know, I need to teach that, like that kernel, that corn, that ear of corn, every single kernel is a seed. And if you don't, if you don't hand pollinate, like labor of love, take the pollen off the, off the tassels, you know, and, and off the top of the corn and put it on the little silver tassels. If every single tassel doesn't get pollinated, you're going to be missing an, a kernel of corn on the, on the, on the ear, because every single tassel corresponds to a kernel on the cob. And it's like the, the Africans knew that. Yeah. And that seed would, would then create a plant that would create more seeds and more seeds. And so they understood that that was their bounty, that they needed to be able to give from abundance. And so, you know, that's what we're trying to do is we're just trying to mimic what we were taught deep in our roots, deep in our bones, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful. Well, and I think for, for humans, I mean, I, I, I'm really glad that you brought that up about how important seeds are because, I mean, really, honestly, the work you're doing is so critical in so many ways. But, I mean, you know this, which is like globally, we have a seed shortage for many, many reasons. We won't go into it because we can get really deep. But there's actually a seed shortage and we don't have a diversity of seeds. We don't have enough seeds. Yeah. And we're losing, I mean, there's so many countries because the uh, past generation were farmers and then the younger generations don't farm. That knowledge base is being lost 
And so honestly, it's it's so critical. I mean, that's why for me, as I'm imagining what you're saying about all, every single yard in San Diego, we would be so wealthy. I mean, in so many ways, if we did that. Can you imagine if every other yard had a garden that everybody, everybody, every people, you know, in between each of those was able to eat from it. I mean, it's like, you know, neighbors would know neighbors. There would be conscious relationships. We would love each other. We would advocate for one another. We certainly would advocate for the elements and the earth. Like we would just have a whole nother set of priorities and we would live accordingly. And that's the world we want to live in, you know? Yeah. And we'd be honoring our ancestors in doing it. So all would work, everything would work out a little bit better, don't you think? I mean, yeah. I'm not saying we yeah. would be able to save ourselves from this, some of the irrevocable decisions we've made, but we'd definitely we'd be go out a little better. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. So I have a really small porch, but I'm super inspired now. And I didn't realize that I could do it with not needing like this massive amount of land or even like I don't even have a backyard. So for someone who's listening who is, fortunate enough to be in the San Diego area to have your services. How do I get started with something like okay, this? So I, what do I do? So what part of town do you live in, if you don't mind? I'm in Pacific Beach. Oh, I'm PV. Okay. And I'm in Hillcrest. Yeah. And just so you know, I live on the top of a building and I don't have a yard either. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh my God. Oh my God I love Thanks that. <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't Yardless know. gardener. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I started my garden at the south end of La Jolla in the Park La Jolla apartments um, on a balcony and I did a square foot garden. It was four foot by four foot. It was just one singular plot and I separated it into 12 um, or 16 squares and I planted a different variety in each square. I mean, I got so much food. I even got corn, I promise you. Like I got tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, corn, beans. Um, The Native Americans taught us how to maximize this use of a small space to create like maximum amount of bounty. And that's also in my insert this week because I've got that in my blood too. Um, (laughs) But, you know, given the right soil and, you know, in in the case of gardens in people's yards, a little bit of micro irrigation goes a long way. Mm -hmm. But if you're just dedicated to making sure that your soil hydration is right and that your soil is uh, nutrient dense, which we can teach you about that, you know, you pretty much can grow a lot of things in a small space, in a small container. So, um, like I said, we're starting our soulful green practice um, we're going to hopefully teach people how to contain your garden because a lot of people are just stuck in the house and they can't really get out. Mm-hmm. I mean, some folks are, you know, are sick and they can't get out, but just to care for a garden inside can really help heal them. So going forward, we're, yeah. we're seeing that could be something that we need to spend a little bit more time and energy. But if you send us a little note through our website, if you go to the grow food link and you say that you're interested in growing food, there's a little intake form there. We'll contact you and we'll help you get started. Yeah. Yeah, I know I won't, I won't, I won't be able to not get started because my boyfriend listens to all the podcasts and he is going to be like all over this. Really? I'm super excited about it too. So <laughs> you have a started. whole thing about square foot garden. Um, so my husband has native American blood also, and he focused a lot on uh, last season. We try or last year we try square foot garden and you're so right. Um, he, you know, he did, and you can grow lots of stuff, but actually what we got to learn was more about our soil, but right. also that's have a very big space. That's what happens the very first time you start to grow is you realize what is my soil deficient? Yes. The plants will tell you, and it's like, it's like having a child and your child will tell you what it needs, but you have to try to learn its language. And, you know, a lot of love goes a long way. So even though you might have soil that's deficient, if you're out there every day and you're tending to it, you know, that love will then translate into action and that action will hopefully help support the plants a little better. So soil science, really we are, we are soil farmers, you know, you can't grow anything healthy and unhealthy soil. So we're soil farmers first. And as a farmhand, our job is to make sure that your soil is right. Because if your soil is right, everything above it's going to be right. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, get your soil, get your soil right. <laughs> I'm true that. Soil is so important. I love it. <laughs> that's like a metaphor you know get your get your soil right get your base right yeah I mean, the rest of you will grow people get, people get kind of yeah. like I, like, I, I, want, I hope they don't get annoyed with me but for me every <laughs> natural fact there's some spiritual wisdom so I've kind of made it my like sanctuary my sermon you know to like talk about how the earth teaches us you know it's just like if you can identify with the plant or if you can identify yourself with the soil then you will you basically be able to understand what it's calling for you know, because every living organism, which your soil is a living organism. 
so is your plant. A living organism is a collection of individual parts that work better together than they do separately, right? So this is how we teach the children. So the soil is made up of fungi, bacteria, microbes, you know, protozoa, you know, nematodes, like all these different organisms, but it's also made up of aged fir bark and topsoil and compost and different components. So it's a collection of individual parts that work better together than they do separately. Um, and every single living organism needs five things to thrive and survive, right? It needs water, sun, air, nutrients, and love. And so when you approach your garden, you can ask those questions, you know, did I, does it have enough water? You know, is there enough airflow in this space? You know, um, can my plant see the sun? You know, did I give it enough love today? You know, it's simple. The, the questions are very elementary and they're very basic. And if they're deficient in any of those five areas, then you start to see a little bit of dis-ease, right? Your plant is not as happy. And so it might have disease. It might have challenges. It might have pests. It might have, you know, some kind of fungal problem. And so you just kind of slowly start to, to figure out, you know, what is it that I gave it too much or not enough of? Because <laughs> yeah. that's what it is, right? So gardening is not, like, I want to demystify. And the, only, the best way I know how to demystify is, for, is to personify it so that you can identify with it. And then you'll be able to establish a conscious relationship with it because you'll have communication, right? Mm -hmm. With it. Yeah. So that's my pro that. Oh, Amazing. Thank you for talking about that. I'm, you speak so eloquently about everything. I'm like, oh, thank oh, you. You yeah. should write a book. <laughs> you need to do a I'll master class. Yeah. Yeah, master class yeah. I'm like, I'm poor. I'm not making any money. No, <laughs> I really should do that. No. <laughs> Um, well, um, you know, here's the thing, Mia, is like, I mean, this is an intro to what you're doing, but I actually really want to come back to you to talk about things, so many things we didn't even cover, right? So like food justice, but also there's so much to talk about around food, which is probably one of my most favorite topics in every single way, because I also love to eat, but definitely want to bring you back. Because I think that like, as people listen, they also get to understand like you're the gardening, but then mystifying it and then the sharing of what a garden can mean beyond just, Oh, I'm going to grow something and I can eat it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're consumers. We have a hard time getting out of that consumer mentality. But I think people are with COVID-19. I think that's actually working on our favor on that. That is one of the silver linings of COVID-19. So yeah, you know, we're, how do I go beyond just trying to satisfy my gut, you know, my palate, you know? Yeah. I mean, do you Definitely. even taste your food? Most people just, I got to eat right now. I got to get I'm hungry. I gotta get set. Do you even taste it? <laughs> you yeah. know, now COVID-19 making us slow down. A lot of us actually are having meals we taste. Yes. You know, that's true. To just keep, just, I would love to just talk about food for. Just garden. You're going to give us gardening tips yeah. every, every single time. We're yeah. like, right, what are we going to learn today? Yeah. Well, you yeah. have to participate in my soulful green practice. You might end up, yes. at, you might end up at Lapa's house. <laughs> that's right. Definitely. <laughs> well, it's a gorgeous yard. It is. It's fun. It needs more, it needs more hands and Thank you for having me. This has been wonderful. Oh my gosh. This is wonderful. It's a great learning experience. I mean, in so many ways. Yeah. yeah I yeah. love that Hey Definitely. Social Good is doing like reaching out and doing it with podcasts like this because I want to watch the podcast that you do with the other folks. Yeah. <laughs> in it. You know, I want to know what else and how we can collaborate and where the points of connection are. And so thank you so much for your effort. Oh, thank you. Well, that's, I mean, that's the thing is I feel like people don't hear enough about all the good positive stories, like, and then how people start it and how they persist and, and then mm -hmm. they do succeed. However you want to define success. But for us, it's like, you learn so much from just a simple half hour podcast of listening to people condense without having to, do more and then you can decide like okay do you want to learn more about that or about yeah that? yeah yeah definitely. thank you yeah and a lot of people too like when you were a majority of the people we've interviewed have come from totally different backgrounds than what they ended up in because they have passion about what they want to do so when you mentioned that you were like a, the financial planner for you know 20 some years before this like I was like everyone we talk to is just come from, from a totally different background of what, where they are now so yeah. it's really inspiring I feel like yeah. for people to listen to trend. So, I think yeah that people are being led, you know, coming into new things that they never thought they never, I never saw my, I was scared to death actually when I was on my knees digging in the dirt. I was like, oh my gosh, you know. What did I just do? Yeah. What, how am I going to feed myself? Like what, you know, am I going to do? So. Well, well, you're growing gardens. 
Thank you so much, Mia. And, and in so many ways, in all the ways you've mentioned it. Um, it's beautiful. Everybody, please, please visit Good Neighbor Garden San Diego. You have a beautiful website, by the way. My favorite, okay. One of my favorite colors is yellow. So please go visit her site. Um, if you don't want to garden, that's fine. Get a CSA box. Yeah. Easy so you can basically, you know, enjoy the fruits. Yeah. Help, it, help When you get a CSA box, you basically help support our education programs. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mia. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to this episode of Good Smack. We hope you've enjoyed talking smack with us. And don't forget to check out Hey Social Good, Hey Sogo for short, to learn about all of the other awesome brands out there giving back to the world and our planet. Until next time, Good Smackers.